Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews. Today we're checking out a boat that's up for sale which I believe offers the best value for money of any of the boats I've ever featured on my channel. We are looking at a twin diesel, low hours, 1991 Bayliner 3888 motor yacht that at the time of shooting this video was up for sale for $78,000 in Jacksonville, Florida. And while there's a few areas of the boat that might require some cosmetic attention, it just blows my mind that for under $80,000 you've got a twin diesel, twin cabin, four berth, twin helm, liveboard cruiser that's in sail away condition. The owner welcomes any inspection, sea trial and survey and for the money this one won't disappoint. As I step on the bathing platform, notice the woodwork that's around. The cockpit all has coverings on it to protect it from the element. Underneath the cockpit seating and carpet there's a large lazarette but I can show you that from the engine room later on. And speaking of engine room, this one even has direct access to the engine room from the aft cockpit itself. Those are twin four cylinder turbocharged diesels, they've got less than 1500 hours on the clock. And you're looking at a cruising speed of around 10 knots and a top speed somewhere around 15-16 knots. As I make my way around the deck, I like the fact that it's got the guardrail on the outside, there's handholds as well. You also see we've got all the window coverings protecting the interior. I was pleasantly surprised to find that this one's actually got a deck crane mounted on the bow. That way you can lift up your tender and store it safely and secure without having to worry about towing it anywhere. I like the use of the large fender baskets that's mounted on the bow. That way when the boat's underway you can keep the fenders close by, but you don't have to worry about storage. We do have an electric windlass and this one's actually got two anchors. I like the fact it's got a almost bowsprit effect and that way it keeps the anchor further away from the hull when you're doing your launch and retrieval. And this forward compartment, not only do you have storage for your bow lines, but it also does have a deck wash system in it too. To pan the camera around you'll see there's plenty of space on the bow if you wanted to lay out here, if you wanted to sit and do a spot of fishing. And then you can see we've also got that cradle for your tender. You can get a small rib up here without any issues. We've also got large wraparound windows. And this one does have an internal lower helm position. Which I always prefer having both the fly bridge and the lower helm. That way you can cruise in comfort regardless of what the weather is outside. And from this angle you can also see better that wraparound handrail that was mentioning as I was walking along the side deck. As we make our way inside, we've got the saloon to port, you've got that lower helm to starboard. And most of the windows you see, those are actually sliding opening windows, so you get plenty of ventilation if you want it. And that cockpit table, that lowers down and the saloon becomes a large double berth. There's plenty of headroom on board, I'm 6 foot 2 and I never had any issues throughout the entire boat. And this saloon's big enough, you'll easily seat 5 or 6 adults in comfort. And then in front of the saloon, we've got a large flat screen TV, giving you plenty of entertainment on board. So in the starboard quarter, we've got a little wet bar area. There's a stainless steel sink here. Which the owner currently has a dehumidifier on board, and it's got that drainage plugged into there. And I never felt any dampness when I was on board, including all the pillows and cushions and things like that. There's storage that's currently being used for cleaning materials. And then we also have an ice maker on here for all your drinks and refreshments. And then above that we've got a drawer here that's got easy storage. And I like the fact it's as accessible coming into the cabin. That way you can keep things like keys, maybe a flashlight, something along those lines. Something that's easy to grab. And then right at the door we've also got the generator controls. This one's got a 7.6 kilowatt Wester Beat generator installed. So although this one has a lower helm, it's definitely equipped for cruising from the flybridge. But at the lower helm you're going to find your full engine instrumentation. This is where you've got the main control panel for your AC and DC connections. And again I like how accessible this is as well, and also how clearly labelled everything is. It's easy to switch things on and off. We do have an ICOM VHF radio as well. And then below the wheel we do have different gauges here including monitoring your electrical systems. There's a water level monitor. And we also have the windless controls up here too. Now I'm not sure if you can make this out, but the port engine has got 1487 hours and the starboard's got 1356. That's very low hours for its age. And these engines have been well maintained and there's a number of documentation on board. 
that you can review to back that up. And then if you're looking at using this for extended cruising or if you're looking at this as a full-time liveaboard, it's got very comfortable accommodation down below. A couple of steps down into starboard you've got the galley and I like the fact it's got both a fridge and freezer. Makes it far easier for preparing all your favourite meals. You've got double stainless steel sinks and that faucet also pulls out as a kind of shower head type effect. You've got good countertop space, you've got good storage. We've got a two burner electric stove top, we've got a dishwasher underneath, convection microwave oven overhead, and then if I clear off that corner and open the hatch you'll see there's plenty of room in here for your dry goods, this could be things like canned goods, but for a boat of this size they did well to utilise as much space as they could. And underneath the countertops we've got more storage, currently there's a number of cleaning equipment in here, but you could easily use this for storing pots and pans, plates, things like that too. And the door on the left, that opens up and there's a number of drawers in here for all your utensils. And I like the fact there's as much natural light as well as artificial light in here. The side window opens so you get ventilation, which is really important, especially when you're cooking. And on the deck in the galley, there's also an easy access to the bilges, and it's got a number of through-hole connections. But you can also see just how dry the bilges are. And for accommodation, this one's got two cabins on board. The first one is on the port side, opposite the galley. And in here you're going to find a large double berth. Again, with both natural and artificial light, with the windows that's available to open. And being basically midships, this would be a very comfortable berth to be in when at anchor, because the boat's not going to pivot the same way at this point of the boat, so you won't feel the effects of the bow in the stern. There's a number of storage options in this cabin, including behind the headboard, which is ideal for things like clean sheets for the bed. As we make our way around the cabin, we also do have a storage area that's got a clever design where it's got a hanging locker set up, but it's also got a shelf, so you can choose if you want to have it in two sections or one. And then you can access the head compartment direct from the cabin, as well as from the main passageway. Probably a good time to point out that this one's got 80 gallons of fresh water, 304 gallons of fuel, and 40 gallons holding tank capacity. And what I wasn't expecting from this one is if I slide this dark glass screen across, this one's actually got a bathtub in here as part of the shower compartment. And there's good headroom in that shower compartment where I honestly believe you could use this shower without any issues. And the boat measures in at just over 38 feet in length, and she's got a beam of almost 13 and a half feet. And I like the fact that as you're walking around, you don't feel the boat move. It's a very solid, safe and secure boat for its size. As I make my way back out to the main passageway, on the bows where you're going to find the owner's stateroom. This one's got a large island berth, it's easily accessible from either side. You get access from this stateroom to that bath and shower. You also see we've got a TV sitting on what could be either a desk or a vanity station, doubles up as either. Plenty of portholes and overhead hatches. We've got good hanging locker space on the starboard side. And as well as the lockers and drawers on the port side, we actually have more drawers underneath the bed itself. So again, if you want to do extended cruise on a liveboard, this definitely feels like it's got the basic requirements to make that an enjoyable task for you. And although the forward cabin does share that bath and shower, it does have its own standalone head compartment with plenty of storage for your toiletries and personal belongings. I also like the fact that this one does have an overhead hatch, but it's got that mesh screen effect to it so you can open it and not have to worry about any bugs or anything like that coming in. And then next up we'll show you the engines and I actually access the engine room from just inside the cabin itself. And looking aft you can see all the storage that we have in that lazarette that I mentioned earlier. As well as a generator that looks virtually brand new, it's in very good condition. And if you were doing your day to day maintenance, doing all your oil checks and checking your filters and things like that, there's plenty of room down here to work on both the engines. And I'm always a firm believer the easier it is to do maintenance, the more chance maintenance has been carried out. And this one's certainly got a number of service records to back that up. And having that door access to the cockpit, you can open that and you'll get plenty of light and ventilation in here. But it's also a really easy way to just 
pop your head in, make sure you don't see anything out of the ordinary, smell anything, anything along those lines. And then finally I'll show you the flybridge. It was easy enough climbing the ladders to get up here so all your family and friends should be able to join you up here in comfort. And when you make your way up to the flybridge, it's got a large bimini cover and then these do have wraparound windows. So you've got a number of options there for when you're cruising. You've got three helm seats and I can honestly say of every boat I've featured on the channel, these are probably the most comfortable helm seats of any boat I've featured so far. When you sit at the helm, it's like you're sitting in the sofa at home. And I also want to point out that although we do have that radar arch and bimini cover, they are all able to be collapsed and fold down. So if you're worried about height restrictions, especially if you're doing something like the Great Loop, you can still consider this boat because it's easily accessible. The helm position is pretty much centrally located in the boat, so it gives you great access when you're doing your close quarter manoeuvring. That way you can see the bow and the stern. This one's definitely geared towards cruising from the flybridge. Up here we've got your autopilot, we've got your compass, you get the Ray Marine multifunction display, you get your full engine instrumentation. And you've also got a number of cup holders, which I think is ideal not only for drinks and refreshments, but they also get used for handheld devices, whether that's cell phones or handheld VHF, things like that. And from up in the flybridge, I can also show you that extended canopy that covers over the cockpit down below. And again, if you ever wanted to, that's easily retractable as well. I'd like to thank my friends at Huckins Yachts for inviting me down to check this one out and share the video with you. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments, if you can leave a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, if you can hit that like and subscribe button, it really does make a difference. And I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.